Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. We are at 18,000 subscribers and counting. I am always grateful for the support and I hope I continue helping all of you bust the myths surrounding commercial pilot training. Take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on future video notifications. Let's dive right into our discussion for today. A lot of you have written in to me asking me one of these four questions. I scored poorly in physics and mathematics. Can I still become a commercial pilot? Or I did not do physics and mathematics at the 10 plus 2 level, meaning you were a commerce or an arts student during your 11th and 12th, or in some countries, A-levels or high school. Can I still become a commercial pilot? Or I finished my 10th, enrolled for a diploma and never did 10 plus 2. Can I still become a commercial pilot? Or, and this one is dangerous, I don't like physics and maths. I have hated physics and maths my whole life. Can I still become a commercial pilot? Stay tuned. Don't forget these four questions. If you do, refer back to them during the video because I'll be discussing them not necessarily in order. Let's talk about all these questions and hopefully by the end of this video, you will be absolutely clear on the role physics and maths plays in pilot training. So let's get the eligibility criteria out of the way first and be clear on what you need to start pilot training in India and a few other countries in this region. You need physics and maths at the 10 plus 2 level. It is a requirement. You will not be allowed to enroll into a flying school for a CPL course in India if you cannot prove you have taken and passed physics and maths at the 10 plus 2 level. If you do your CPL abroad, you will not be allowed to convert your CPL to an Indian CPL unless you can prove you have done physics and maths at the 10 plus 2 level. So depending on where you are in the country, along with your other subjects during your 11th and 12th, physics and maths is mandatory. If you are in a place like Bombay, typically after your 10th standard, you join junior college, which in places in the north like Delhi is still referred to as school, sometimes high school. It doesn't matter what your other subjects are. I remember having English, computer science and chemistry in addition to physics and math during my 10 plus 2 level studies. All you need is physics and math at the 10 plus 2 level to be eligible for a CPL course. Some of you have asked me, I'm done with my 10 plus 2 and I did physics, chemistry and biology. Am I eligible to be a pilot? No, you're not. Some of you get angry when you hear this. Your reply is, I've done 12 just like anybody else and the only difference is I did biology instead of mathematics. Can't they make an exception? No, my friends, they cannot. The rules are very clear. You need to have cleared 12th with physics and maths definitely being among the subjects you opted for. Some of you have done a diploma after your 10th, having never done 10 plus 2. Even you guys, unfortunately, are not eligible for an Indian CPL unless you can prove you have cleared physics and maths at the 10 plus 2 level. Here ends the bad news. Now the good news. Is there a way around this? Sure there is. It's called open schooling. I want you to Google National Institute of Open Schooling where you can enroll separately and give either physics or maths or both at the 10 plus 2 level. It doesn't matter when you cleared your 10 plus 2, whether in 2001, 2005, 2010, 2020, it doesn't matter. If you have cleared your 10 plus 2 without physics and maths and at any time in the future you clear physics and maths through open schooling, you are now eligible to undergo your CPL training. It also doesn't matter if you're a diploma holder having never done 10 plus 2. All you need to do is clear only physics and maths through open schooling and you're good to go. So do not procrastinate. If you haven't done your physics and maths yet, get it done quick. So guys, this gets eligibility out of the way. I hope we are now clear on the eligibility requirements to start CPL training. Now let's talk about the topic of this video. The key question, I scored poorly in physics and mathematics. Can I still become a pilot? Once again, my friends, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is, yes, you can begin commercial pilot training even if you've scored poorly in physics and maths. The bad news is we need to discuss just how badly you did in those exams. I cannot count the number of times you guys have asked me this question on Instagram, on email, and quite a few times my answer has been, sure, you can go ahead with your pilot training even though you've scored poorly in physics and maths. Now, what I don't want you to do is to adopt an indifferent attitude, sing a song, rub your hands together and say, brilliant, let's go start pilot training. Flying? and the studies involved in obtaining a CPL are all about physics and maths. There is hardly any other subject that influences pilot training more than physics and maths. Everything from lift to drag, mass and balance calculations, radio wave theory, internal combustion engines, jet engines, all revolves around physics and maths. So the question of whether you can enroll to become a pilot if you've scored very poorly in physics and maths is actually quite irrelevant. Considering if you've not done well in physics and maths, you will find it extremely challenging to understand the theory needed to clear the exams that make you a commercial pilot. So quite obviously, the next question is, how bad is bad? When you say scored poorly, just how bad a score do you consider bad? The answer is very subjective, but to make things simple, let's just say that since most pilot exams in the world require you to score a 70% to pass, if you scored a 70% in your physics and maths exams, you should be okay. A 60% should also be okay. An 80 or a 90%, brilliant. 
But when things start going south of 60, I would start getting a little worried. But fear not, just because you didn't score very well doesn't mean you can't improve. If you've not scored very well, work a little harder and understand the fact that you will find pilot studies a little more challenging. As long as you're aware of this, you won't be surprised or disheartened if you're a little slow in coping up with your pilot studies. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being a little slow in understanding. You'd rather be slow with understanding concepts and finally understand them then be slow, look for a shortcut, and never understand a concept. So let's recap on where we are with our discussion, guys. We started with eligibility, cleared the air on eligibility, and the fact that you need physics and maths. There's no way around it. We spoke about open school in case you don't have physics and maths. We then spoke about just having physics and maths not being enough because even if you scored low marks, you may find pilot studies very challenging because pilot studies are basically all about physics and maths. We then concluded that as long as you know that with a low score in physics and maths, you will have to work extra hard to clear your CPL exams, you will be fine. So far, so good. Now, my friends, let's talk about that fourth question and what I consider the most dangerous of the four questions. I have been asked this question a lot, sometimes by parents of aspiring pilots as well. I want my kid to be a commercial pilot, but he or she just cannot stand physics or maths. My kid is great at computers or biology or languages, but he or she cannot stand physics or maths. Now, first things first, when you say you hate maths, what kind of maths do you hate? I myself cannot stand calculus. I've never fully understood calculus. It's not something that interests me. But you don't need to be good at calculus to be a pilot. The physics and maths you need to be interested in pilot training is very basic, very simple. You don't need to know complex mathematics, but you need to be able to add two numbers very quickly, subtract two numbers very quickly, make a fuel calculation very quickly by looking at two numbers on a fuel gauge, adding them together, subtracting this from the total fuel on the airplane to check your aircraft's fuel burn accuracy. This is just an example. There are many little calculations that are similar in nature that you will need to make, but you get the point. The physics and maths needed to be a pilot is simple, basic, conceptual stuff. You don't need to be a theoretical physicist or a mathematician to be a pilot, but you need to love studying fundamental physics and maths. Now, why did I say this question, the fourth one, is very dangerous? Because if you have heard what I just said, and if you still feel like the kind of fundamental physics and maths studies I spoke of does not interest you, then, my friend, you need to introspect and ask yourself if your decision to want to be a pilot is right or wrong. Because there is no escaping studying physics and maths if you are a pilot right up to the age of 65 and maybe even beyond that. I don't want to scare you, but this is the absolute truth. So there you have it, guys. This brings us to the end of a very short video today. I think we have amply dissected the requirements of physics and maths well enough for you to understand the role it plays in pilot training. If you're still unclear, I'm always just a DM away on Instagram. The handle is right here. Hit the like button on this video if it has helped you and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to also hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on future notifications. As always, to safe skies and safer land. Bye.